Good morning. Hello, targeted individuals out there. This is Timothy Darrell Young, Bachelor of Science, Political Science, University of Oregon, 2003, Master of Public Administration, University of Oregon, 2005. Uh, something that I hold dear that I learned about in graduate school in being a social scientist and trying to take the politics out of policy was qualitative and quantitative research in making decisions of, about the public, trying to use science as best we can to make the most informed decision possible. Hello, gang stalkers, and fucking touche on the tricks played in the last 24 or 48 hours. Um, I'm staying at a group home out in Pendleton, Oregon right now. And uh, I have two pairs of watches. I bought a Swatch watch uh, some years ago to be throwback and cool of, about the 90s. It, you got to be in my age demographic to know how cool Swatch watches were. Um, when I was growing up, I couldn't afford them as a young person and uh, got one as an older uh, gentleman. Here's another watch. This is a, a Casio watch with a bunch of different features. So, so in uh, the technology of uh, Project Blue Beams making holograms with mass but no matter, a gang stalker can transfer their body to one of these hologram forms and get into nearly, if not literally, any building, any location. There may be some uh, black budget um, rooms surrounded in water that, like, the Pentagon has in the deep underground military base that keeps them out. Um, maybe not though. Uh, anyways, what is interesting uh, about the trick played on me is that I woke up and the times and dates on both of my watches were changed. Now this one, you think it's electronic. Well, maybe it could have been done remotely. This one isn't electronic. This is an old uh, style watch. You would have had to physically manipulate it in order to change the time. And so I got some blowback, some boom, boom, uh, from posting some of my uh, videos on YouTube, which I explained the counter on those are being uh, manipulated to seem like a smaller um, number of people are watching the uh, valuable information that I'm sharing. I come from a long line of great people. Fortunately, I, had, I, I was born into a family of good stock. On my mother's side, I'm related to the 19th president, Rutherford B. Hayes, and have been reading his biography for some time now. Rutherford B. Hayes, warrior and president. He uh, was designated a, a, designated a three-star general in the Civil War but in practice, he, he's modest to say that during the war and combat, he was more of a colonel. Got shot, um, uh, lived through the conflict. Uh, and back then, it was the Southern Democrats that were for slavery. Um, and the Republicans were against it. Uh, there was, some, he, he was a governor of Ohio. Uh, he was a lawyer. Um, he was a U.S. president. And then when he was done with his presidency, he was uh, on the board of trustees of the Ohio State University, started the university. I, as a descendant, many, many, many years later, I served on the Oregon State Board of Higher Education over seven public universities in Oregon. Um, it has since been destroyed and recreated as the Higher, Ed Higher Education Coordinate Coordination Commission. And the, the, ind the individual universities themselves have their boards of trustees, so the power was decentralized. Uh, typical of gang stalkers is breaking in with the technology that allows them to appear in any room and rearranging stuff so that you know that they were there as a means of intimidation. It is um, my understanding that they don't like generating police reports, but I have an aunt <clears throat> who we got moved out of uh, Southern California where gang stalking is horrific. And she moved to her uh, hometown 
where my mom's family grew up and she's having thefts like thousands of dollars worth of painting supplies, paintings she worked on for her life's work, electronics, money. She has trouble even leaving uh, the apartment uh, in order to put garbage away because something happens when she leaves and she's really in a state of severe distress. Um, I do peer support counseling for her as best I can. Um, the tactic of divide and conquer in families um, hasn't been successful between my aunt and I. We're both aware targeted individuals. It's such a common um, occurrence that whole families are attacked by these community spy groups that it shows up as a um, checkbox mark uh, area on Dr. Catherine Horton's 94 page affidavit of all of many of the different ways we're tortured as targeted individuals worldwide. She retreated from Twitter. She retreated from YouTube and I think is putting out content still on Patreon or whatever. I just, I'm so poor as a TIM on social security, disability, SSI. I can't afford to pay for, um, uh, subscription based, uh, information. And I give my information out for free. Um, because one of the ways that we're controlled as TI is to keep us really poor. So I had some blowback. My counters on YouTube are being altered and my clocks counting, uh, got altered in my domicile. And so I'm trying not to let it bother me. I just put them back to the right time again. And, um, I'm gonna go on with my day, uh, but touche gang stalkers. That, that, that's pretty cute. <laughs> Getting the counters on the YouTube and then changing the good times and dates on my clocks. So I'll keep this video short and just say good morning to all of you. Oh, uh, synthetic dreams. I, I was able to speak with other TIs at the Oregon State Hospital that were knowing TIs that were getting exposed to synthetic dreams. Um, when your brain is in data or delta uh, brain wavelengths, like 2.5 to 0.5 hertz of electromagnetic activity and um, theta brain wavelengths up to about, I think, 4 hertz of electromagnetic energy, that's like in between deep sleep and dreaming. Your brains can be hacked uh, while you're asleep, and it's used for like interrogation, exploitation, um, testing of ways to murder you. Like I often was having dreams of like the uh, brakes going out on my truck or car and then switching down gears to slow down the vehicle. And then in the real world, they could use that as a tactic to actually really kill me and then make it look like an accident, but it was really a murder. Um, they're manipulating and taking advantage of us when our brains are operating at the electromagnet electric electromagnetic activity level of like a three-year-old and the thing about uh, synthetic dreams is that they're in vivid color men don't dream in color is what i was taught growing up it's hard to have enough self-awareness to even know that for some of the public so women are really um, at a disadvantage in synthetic dreams and sometimes in synthetic dreams like it's like 20% of normal reality. Like if you touch somebody's shoulder in a synthetic dream, you feel like you've touched your shoulder. That's not normal in um, normal dreaming. And so that had been happening to me for, uh, when, when I got into custody for uh, my incident offense, that started happening to me intensely for about four years, um, four and a half years. And so I've been exposed to being exploited with my three-year-old brain, interrogated uh, by synthetic humanoids, and then the uh, gang stalkers that have transferred their consciousness to this uh, virtual space around visible light and the electromagnetic spectrum while I'm asleep. I would often wake up and my mouth would be extremely dry uh, because of the microwave radiation going into my brain or whatever part of the electromagnetic spectrum it's in. Uh, a torture that started getting used on me about four and a half years ago was called a thousand needles and it would be random uh, pinpoint pricks of pain in my body that, that are more painful than a blood draw and that went on for or going on about a half a decade 
Um, I will try and not bring up all of the different ways that I am tortured. You could look at my 94 page affidavit on my um, website, it's linked off Substack. If you do a search, Tim Young, Blue Oregon, you can still kind of get to a lot of my content even though I'm being censored and obscured. Um, it causes discomfort and pain in others to hear about other people being tortured. And so a lot of the reasons why guys and gals coming back from overt warfare, why they don't wanna talk about it is because they don't wanna hurt other people and explaining uh, the suffering that they endured themselves. Tons of TIs do it. Like 60, 70% of the phone calls I have with my aunt is her explaining to me how she's being tortured, but she's really hit it, getting hit hard out in McMinnville, Oregon. It's um, stressful for me and extremely stressful for her. Um, they're trying to break her will. And um, I, I work with my aunt to, to make sure that that doesn't happen. So uh, one more thing I wanna show. This is my statue of Lord Buddha, a prince who didn't want to get into politics. As the story goes, his dad built seven walls not to keep people out, but to keep Lord Buddha in. A wise man was told that when he was born, he would either be a great leader or a great spiritual teacher. He decided to jump the walls and figure out how to get out of incarnating and stop the suffering that he saw his people enduring and we've all been better for it around the planet. He lived at 80 years old, died of bad food, um, and is my Lord. Uh, he didn't claim to be a God. He didn't claim to be a son of God. He claimed to be a man. Um, and his best advice was, I, you know, I've been through the high highs and low lows, experienced extreme pleasure and extreme pain, and you want to get out of incarnating as you're in your, in your human form, you have your best shot at doing that. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm an aspiring Buddhist Arhut. It looks like it's spelled Arhat. Um, and if that means traveling towards the center of the Milky Way, when time is not such a barrier and I lose my meat suit uh, to find a more advanced civilization that's not gonna mind control and enslave false deification, coup their planet, that, that's what I'm gonna do. If I got to spend a lot of time in space alone traveling, I'm going to do that. I have some instruction on my um, Substack. You can just, I think, just type in Timothy Darrell Young Substack and get to that. It's my pinned post. It's the most important piece of information I'm sharing. And so that is my morning of March 28th. And I didn't know, know that until I looked around the clocks and talked to some of the very helpful, earnestly, sincerely um, committed to the health and well-being of clients like me, staff out here at my group home in Pendleton, Oregon. So I'm approaching about uh, 14 minutes. I'm going to cut this off, but I had some blowback and a break in, and it's kind of hilarious too. The, in some of these psychological operation tactics, like humor can be lethal. Like people literally, I'm sure, have been laughing all their way to their own death. Um, and I try to use humor for uh, more wholesome purposes. Anyways, peace, have a great morning, and uh, I hope you don't get any break-ins.